going to look at surface area to volume ratio. Uh, now this is a slightly more detailed and involved area of the topic. Uh, and more than just understanding the surface area to volume ratio, you, we need to understand the effects of uh, the rate of diffusion. Um, so that includes surface to volume ratio. It also includes temperature and concentration gradient. So first, let's have a look at surface area to volume ratio. Let's consider this table. We've got three different cubes. The first one is one centimetre. The next is two centimetres and three centimetres. If we work out the ratio, the largest ratio is the smallest cube. And the larger the ratio, the quicker the rate of diffusion. And this is why unicellular organisms only need to rely on diffusion, because their small size means they have a better chance of, be of being able to diffuse substances quickly. Uh, now we'll look at why that is in a sec. So diffusion and osmosis occurs because molecules have uh, something called kinetic energy, so the, the energy to move around. And these molecules bounce off each other and they spread out in a gas. When there's a mixture of them, we call this equilibrium. And this is something we need to know as a theory as we look at how uh, diffusion can be affected. So the first thing is when we change kinetic energy. Now, kinetic energy changes as we increase or decrease temperature. So if we increase temperature and we stir the medium so that the molecules move around and spread out, then it, this will increase kinetic energy. And because of that, when they're moving more and spreading out more quickly, this will increase the rate of diffusion and osmosis. If we decrease the temperature though, expectably the kinetic energy will go down and this will decrease the rate of diffusion for the same reason. And this applies to osmosis as well. For the, when we change the surface area, with a larger surface area, they have more surface to diffuse, which means that it decreases the rate of diffusion. With the size of the concentration gradient, it's the difference between the concentration inside and outside the cell. So i.e. where they are to where they're moving to. And the bigger this difference is, the more opportunity molecules have of diffusing. Now that we've got all of these effects, let's have a look at an exam question to tie up this subject and the previous video, uh, like I promised in the comments. Um, we need to explain the relationship between the food dye concentration and the diffusion with this experiment in mind when we're investigating the effects of different concentrations. So now you've had a look at uh, the question, uh, we can say that as there's a higher dye concentration, that means there's going to be more molecules in the same space. And because of that, the concentration gradient will increase because we're going to an area of high concentration. So it's going from low to high and the difference is much bigger. And lastly, we need to state two variables that the students should control to make the experiment valid. So this is just basic knowing what control variables are and they would be either volume of dye, temperature, or the concentration of the agar jelly.